Hello, my name is Faye, and welcome to the unofficial Makira community channel. This YouTube channel will post updates to the machine firmware, controller, and post processors we have been developing, and occasionally post tutorials. We are not associated with Makira. If you want to follow our progress, we have a GitHub and Trello for future and issue tracking, and you can subscribe to this YouTube channel. Links are in the video description. This first video is a breakdown of the updates to the controller and firmware in the Beta 1 release that is now available on our GitHub. To start, let's walk through some of the beta controller's new features, starting with my new favorite, the reconnect button. The first time you press this button, you will be prompted to input an IP address for the machine you want to connect to. Alternatively, you can connect with the scan for Wi-Fi dialog, and that will fill out all reconnect button requests in the future. From then on, open the controller, hit the reconnect button, and you should be good to go. Next up are bug reports. In the hamburger menu dropdown, at the bottom there is a bug report button that takes you to the relevant GitHub pages. Take a look through the existing issues for both the firmware and the controller, and if you don't see your problem, make a new one. If this issue affects both controller and firmware, feel free to make an issue in both and comment with a link between the two. To post a new issue or feature request, click the New Issue button, give it a descriptive title, and be sure to read and fill out the entire description section. The more information you give us here, the better we will be able to address the issue. Since this code is not officially supported by Makera, please do not send them issues when running our version. We are sending them pull requests and issues as we resolve issues. Alternatively, you can message Faye Corrigan and or Pew Pew Lasers on the Discord or GitHub, and we can help make the issue or help suss out the problem. Back to a fun feature, under the tool dropdown, there are now clamp and unclamp buttons for the spindle collet. They work just like running M490.1 or M490.2 in the MDI. When unclamping the collet, make sure to be ready to catch any tool in the spindle as they will drop out. Last up for the changes in the controller, in the diagnostic screen there's been a slight update to make the vacuum and spindle fan sections work a little bit better. If you're looking to help out with the controller and can do some translation, we do have localization files set up. Send me a message if you are interested. It will not require any coding background, but we do prefer people who speak the localization language fluently and will not be accepting Google Translate. This will be an ongoing process as we add more features to the controller. Thank you to anyone who wants to help out. On to the firmware updates. The community firmware will mostly work with the stock controller if you are so inclined. However, I had to modify how the diagnostic menu works. If you open the stock diagnostic menu, it will be broken and can lead to some other unexpected results. The community controller version fixes this problem. When downloading the new firmware, in the releases section, there is a zip folder of example G codes that show off the various new features, as well as show how they have been unit tested. They are a great starting point to see how to incorporate the new features into your own G code. The first new feature is a tool break test with M491.1. This will measure the tool length offset for the current tool and compare it against the stored value. If it is above a tolerance amount, 0.1 millimeters by default, you can set this to a different value with a H parameter, the machine will halt. A good place to put tool break tests is right before change into a new tool. This allows the machine to detect whether or not a tool broke in the last operation and can help prevent a crash with the new tool. The next two features are about flow control. Opening the MDI and running M336 will turn on line by line execute mode. The machine will pause after every G code line in a file. This is useful for testing out programs for the first time and is an industry standard feature found on all professional CNC machines, often called step mode. M335 will turn line by line execute mode off, and when the machine resets, it will restore back to having line by line execute mode off. Opening the MDI and running M334 will turn on optional stop mode. When optional stop mode is on, any M1 commands in the G code will pause the machine just like M600 does. You can turn off optional stop mode with M333 or a machine reset. When optional stop mode is off, all M1 commands will be ignored. Both optional stop and line by line mode default to off when the machine is reset. Next up are fully implemented manual tool changes. In this firmware, if you give the machine a tool number between 7 and 99 with M6T number, the machine will correctly identify that it needs to perform a manual tool change and walk you through the steps. Be sure to read the instructions in the MDI as you go along. By default, the manual tool change will execute an automatic tool length offset calibration. However, that is overridable. More information on that process will be coming in a dedicated manual tool change video and is documented on the GitHub and in the manual tool change test file. To complement manual tool changes, I added the command m493.3, which allows you to set 
tool length offset with either a known value or using an end mill or gauge block. For instance, M493.3 Z negative 15 would set the current tool length offset to negative 15. If you want to set tool length offset via a gauge pin or end mill shank, move the tool to a location just above the surface you have probed as Z0. Lower the tool until the pin is unable to pass between the Z0 surface and the end of the tool. When moving the tool down, make sure the pin is out of the way so you don't crash the end mill into the pin. Slowly raise the tool until the pin can just slip under the tool. If you go too far, move the end mill out of the way, lower the tool slightly, and try again. When the tool is at the correct height, run M493.3H6, where H6 is the diameter of the pin. The tool length offset should update and you can continue machining. Next up, I have started the implementation of Linux CNC or Phonic style math and variables into this firmware. There's a lot of information in the link in the description on all of the functions implemented, but the short of it is you now have access to basic math functions, trig, binary operators, and a set of variables. The variables fall into three categories, system variables, they give you information about the current machine status, like machine exposition. All system variables are read only. Local variables, number 101 through number 120. These allow you to store information inside a G-code program to recall later. When the machine resets, this information will be lost. Persistent variables, numbers 501 through 520, allow you to store information that persists past machine reset. These are useful for storing information you don't want updated very often, like the machine coordinates of the corner of a vise. Overuse of persistent variables can wear out the EEPROM on the machine over hundreds of thousands of cycles of writing. So while it's not a big issue, it is better to use local variables when you can. For an example, you can set a variable to a value with number 101 equals 2 plus 3. And you can see in the MDI, it says variable 101 is set to 5. And you can later recall that variable with something like G90, G01, X number 5041, which is current machine coordinate system X position, plus number 101, which will add 5 to the current WCS position and move there. At some point soon, I will be working on conditional statements for if, then, etc. They are a bit more complicated to the nature of the G-code parser. I will also be testing larger numbers of local and persistent variables for stability. If you use the stock controller with this firmware, multiplication using the asterisk character in the MDI will cause all sorts of issues. The community controller does not have this issue. Next up are macros or subprograms, which use M98 and M99. They will be getting a dedicated video and allow you to write G-code files that are run inside other programs. One great use case for this is to write a macro that uses a three-axis probe to calibrate the location of your vice corner. Then at the start of every program you use that vice, add the line M98 with path to the file.cnc. In the future, if you change that probing routine, it will update every file that uses it. Last but not least, there are a bunch of three-axis probing commands added to the firmware. They include calibrating the probe tip diameter, locating measuring bores, pockets, bosses, webs, internal and external corners, as well as measuring angles with the probe. There are a lot of parameters to play with, so be sure to dig into the documentation. Do, do note that probing corners with arbitrary rotation is not yet supported. There is a video linked in the description showing off the probing commands, and there will be a dedicated tutorial video coming. That's all for this video. Looking forward to getting feedback, fixing bugs, and adding new features. Thank you for watching.